Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. That would be great. Cheers, thanks. Now, I'm going to be looking at this MVA AP50 amplifier again today because I love banging my head against the brick wall. But in the last video to this, we found that this amplifier section over here is oscillating and it's producing 100 hertz at well if the dim bulb wasn't in circuit it would be considered full power output so yeah that's really good for your loudspeakers but I want to find out where the oscillation is coming from in the last video I surmise it's possibly coming from the input circuitry stage down here that could be where it's coming from. I can't see anywhere else in the circuit where it would be coming from. There was a comment on the last video that these polystyrene capacitors is a bad idea to replace them with ceramics. Okay, yeah, I agree. Um, because these are monophonic. But replacing them with the ceramics and putting them back to the originals made no difference. There was no change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probe around the input circuitry here. We can see another one of those polystyrene crappy capacitors there. And these two transistors here are actually the long tail pair. So this one here is what's connected to the outside world at the input. And this other one here is connected to the negative feedback side. So I'm just wondering what happens if we measure at the base, which I'm going to assume in this transistor's case is this left hand pin over here because it comes off of a 1k resistor. Uh, according to the schematic, uh, there's two 1k resistors in series with the uh, capacitor going to ground in between the two. So that forms a low pass filter there plus a stopper resistor here. That, and, and all that's for is for RFI suppression at the input so you're not picking up radio frequencies and amplifying them especially on long cable runs. So, yeah, I'm going to fire up the oscilloscope and I'm going to just probe around the input circuitry here and uh, just see what's going on. Okay, I'm probing around and that's the output. There's our oscillation. And there's a resistor here somewhere. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. But there's our oscillation again. Uh, so that must be directly connected to it. That's on the output side and on the other side of that so-called resistor there's nothing there, just random noise. So at the base of the first input transistor it's just random noise. There is nothing there. So there is no oscillation at the input as far as I can see. So that didn't prove anything. And this has been powered on for oh, about 10 minutes now and the output transistors are getting warm and the drivers are not so it's not really doing that much damage to anything. So that didn't really prove anything but it was worth a shot I mean something there is not right obviously. So the next course of action I'm going to try is I might um, pull this board back out and I'll remove that polystyrene capacitor at the input there and see if that makes any difference. Probably not. Uh, the other thing I could try is just for oh, giggles, um, I might put a couple of 0.22 ohm resistors in series with those 0.47s just to rule out that it's not the resistor's degeneration. Um, value of resistor there that is causing the issue. It, it shouldn't be that sensitive to it, I wouldn't have thought. But yeah, that's another course of action. And the final course of action is to change these CIP41 and 42C respectively transistors back to the original ones. Um, so yeah, let me um, first try removing that uh, 470 peak ferric capacitor at the input. The resistor that I was measuring at before, which isn't actually connected to the output, was here. This resistor here. On this side there's nothing. 
on this side we've got the oscillation which is coming off of this transistor here and this is part of the cascade uh, VAS arrangement so I'm not sure what transistor that is offhand an EB529 apparently um, so the oscillation is coming around here and in this circuit there is that capacitor there which I put back in I haven't removed this capacitor down here yet I don't see that's going to make a change to be honest but for some reason in the voltage amplification stage is where that oscillation is coming from it's not coming from the input but it is coming from this circuitry here so the next question is as to why um, maybe this capacitor is faulty but yeah I don't know I'd have to look at the schematic to see what this transistor where it is situated in the circuit and what the value of this resistor is because I can't quite read the bands offhand it looks like brown black black red which would to me be 10k so this 10k resistor here which goes off up to here somewhere so I'm not sure where exactly that goes but the oscillation is present on this side of the resistor off of this center pin of this transistor but not on this side of the resistor so that's interesting now even though this schematic is for an AliExpress kit um, it's based on the same circuit anyway it's just running at a slow lower voltage anyway that 10k resistor in question is this one here which goes to ground which is why we've got no oscillation on this side because it's a ground obviously but between these two bases we have got that oscillation so I probably preemptively pulled the board out of circuit way too quickly um, because well there's no way this decoupling here is going to cause oscillation it's got to be coming in through here from somewhere now even though this transistor over here is connected to the negative feedback path so if there's an oscillation on the output well it's going to be an oscillation here and here and most likely here so that may be chasing a red herring but yeah um, I honestly cannot see why it would be oscillating like that and as for that 470 picofarad capacitor that I was talking about um, in that circuit that's here so um, it is possible that it may be oscillating but even with the ceramics in there it was still oscillating so yeah this is this is very time consuming would be a word for it as plus especially annoying um, so uh, at this stage I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this but I would like to find out where the source of this oscillation is because obviously if I'm going to see an oscillation here it's because this transistor is amplifying the oscillation here so it's going to end up back in the VAS again anyway so that's pointless um, what I can do is I can check the circuit board underneath under a magnifying glass and just make sure there's nothing stupid like solder splashes between two tracks or component leads or something like that and failing that I will remove this input capacitor here just to see if that is the cause of the issue because sometimes amplifiers can go into oscillation if this cap is either too low in value um, or yeah, well, basically too low in value. I've had amplifiers oscillate with that capacitor in, and you take the capacitor out and it stops oscillating. And yeah, it is what it is. Although the other module doesn't do that. So, and because the voltages are now going to be wildly different uh, for the supply rails, it's going to be real hard to determine with measuring voltages between the two modules, even though they should be the same voltages. Um, yeah because we've got the oscillation there that's not going to help us with the voltage measurements because the voltage measurements will be different on the faulty module compared to the working module so this is where you end up chasing your tail and banging your head against a brick wall sometimes is because it's like where in this bloody circuit is the problem coming from so 
All right, let me get do, doing some investigation off camera of this circuit board and see if I can come up with something that is an issue. Okay, so I've checked the circuit board for any solder bridges and splashes and stuff like that. There are none. I've also removed the 470 picofarad capacitor off the input. However, no change. Still oscillating. Okay, so my next course of action is going to be changing these two driver transistors back to the original ones and put the capacitor back in obviously um, after checking that it is actually a capacitor and not turning into a resistor um, and just see if my substitution of the TIP 41 and 42C versus the 31 and 32C respectively is not a good idea because in some cases you cannot substitute um, a transistor like that in a circuit like this because it wasn't originally designed to use that transistor and it may have a slightly different electrical characteristic which gives it a different um, operation in the circuit and maybe an undesired operation in this case oscillation I'm really clutching at straws here now um, and whilst I've got the board out, I'm going to go through and check all these transistors again to make sure they're conducting correctly and they're not shorted. And, um, yeah, we'll see what happens when I change them back. I've got to be careful over here at the base connection of this transistor and this resistor. Or, oh, sorry, the uh, emitter, rather, and this resistor because, um, yeah, that lead goes to that pad at the emitter because the pad is uh, disintegrated at the resistor. So I've got to make sure that's still electrically connected. So I'll check the original transistors I pulled out, make sure they're still functioning, conducting, etc. And uh, then I'll come back once I've done the change. Uh, wish me luck at this point. This thing is proving to be so stubborn. I have replaced those transistors back with the original ones and of course, no difference. All right, so I've checked all the other transistors again and the diodes as well. Nothing is open, nothing is shorted. So, yeah, this is becoming a real tactical nightmare. So the only thing left I've got to try is increasing these degeneration resistors here to, well, in this case, 0.69. If I stick a couple of 0.22s uh, at the end of one of these resistors, or each of these resistors, They'll give us an equivalent resistance in series of 0 0.69, <laughs> 69, uh, which is close to the 0 0.68, which is on the other side. So it's the only thing left that I've got. I, I, I can't see any um, other reason why it wouldn't work. I've even checked the output transistors. Both of them are functioning fine. So yeah, this is just becoming a real pain in my butt at this, at this point. Um, yeah, at this stage, I may have to walk away from it because I, I just cannot get this second module working. Which is a shame considering all the work I've put into it. But yeah, it is what it is, I suppose. As ugly as that is, that'll do for a test. Unfortunately, no different. Still oscillating. So. Yeah, well, I've tried everything I can think of. It's not the emitted degeneration being too low. It'll probably function fine at 0.47 ohms. It's just, I don't know. It's just oscillating. What I could try and do is I could try grounding the input connection and see if the oscillation goes away, but I seriously doubt it. But it's worth a try, I suppose. I have honestly never had an amplifier that's been this stubborn. I mean, I've had what had them not working. Right, so I'm grounding the input terminal directly. There's no input capacitor anyway, so it's directly bringing the input capacitor, uh, the input transistor to the ground. No different, the output is still oscillating. So, we know for a fact it's not coming from the input stage. And I don't really want to pull this board out uh, for the, the 150th time. Because it's just getting to the stage now where I just can't be bothered. Um, it's just proving to be a real pain in my ass. And 
As I said, I've never had an amplifier be this stubborn before. So whatever actually destroyed that PMP output transistor in the first place has done something else to the circuit that I'm unaware of, which is strange. Um, I would have thought just replacing the open components and the shorter transistor and everything else checks out okay, resistors and diodes and stuff, it should just work, but no, apparently not. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. And it is becoming very frustrating at the same time. So I really don't know where to go with this. Uh, I mean, I can go through the painstaking task of checking all resistors again to make sure that none have gone open in the meantime. Because um, I look like a real fool if it has. So I might go through off camera and check resistors. I already checked the 447 ohms in the driver circuitry. They seem all fine. I'll go through and check the rest of the resistors again and just make sure that I haven't missed something. So the resistors were checked again and they all seem fine. So I wanted to see how much current was being drawn by that module even though the dim bulb is currently limiting the current anyway. But yeah up to half an amp of current is being drawn here. Um, what that would be when it was at full line voltage. Uh, your guess is as good as mine, it could be anywhere up to like 5 amps of current draw. So I'm getting very tired of this thing. I, I, I really don't want to work on it anymore. Because I cannot find where this oscillation is coming from. It's just eluding me right now and it's becoming to the point of pissing me off to be honest. Yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, it has to be a faulty transistor because even though they check out all right, um, and I've tried everything, I've tried testing components and testing it even on a DC power supply, and it's nothing to do with the first module interfering with the second one or anything. It's not a uh, 100 hertz uh, mains ripple on the filter caps because, well, it's common to both modules and the first module's not doing it. There are no open resistors. Uh, no bad diodes, no nothing. It's just oscillating and it's got to be a faulty transistor somewhere in the uh, probably the vast circuitry. Uh, that's all I can think of. Um, so I'm going to have to leave this video here so if, if you enjoyed it please go down below like comment and subscribe but if you have any further thoughts or ideas of why this could be oscillating uh, let me know in the comments because I did lift out uh, some capacitors like these filters, these 100 nanofarad 250 volt jobbies out of circuit on a DC supply, still doing the same thing. Um, I even pulled out the AC coupling capacitor for the negative feedback, still oscillating. So it has to be somewhere in this vast circuitry that's causing the problem. Anyway, leave your thoughts below. Anyway, this is Yastro 30 saying thank you for watching, and uh, as always, have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.